No price talk and no Lambos. This is not another crypto podcast. Welcome to Ignition. I'm your host, Gillian Gotzel, and each week we will be looking at the problems solved by blockchain. I'll be going deep, deep with the people building the apps and communities which are changing the world around us. Good morning and welcome to EOS Stephen's podcast called Ignition with me, Gillian Gotzel. Now, this morning I'm talking with James Hare, who is the CEO of Brickcoin. Brickcoin. So, James, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Gillian. It's great to be here. And great. And Brickcoin, it sounds as if it's something to do with bricks and water. <laughs> do you want to explain? In, yeah, indeed it is. Brickcoin is, has been set up to tackle the UK's affordable housing crisis using blockchain technology. This is not interesting because, I mean, I live in Ireland and EOS Dublin obviously is in Ireland and we're, we're, we have a huge housing crisis here, but I wasn't aware that the UK had a housing, and actually look at your numbers, they're a lot bigger. Obviously, the size of population is like, was it 60 million and we're only 4 million, but you have a huge problem over in the UK. Yes, we do. And it's uh, unfortunately uh, been building up over the last 40 years of of uh, poor housing policy structuring. So we, we we're now in a position where we've got huge, huge numbers of people on, uh, on waiting lists for, uh, for housing, social housing. We've got people in emergency housing. In fact, it's so bad, we, we have to build in the region of 3 million new homes over the next 20 years to meet the requirements and the demands that are currently out there. That means building 150,000 homes a year, of which currently we're building around about 6,000. So you can see the how far... The are just we're... massive. Again, I go back to the Irish condition. Like we are very incensed here. With the, There's 10,000 people who are homeless in Ireland, um, 4,000 of them children, and most of them are in are hotels, which is costing the state a fortune and not good for the families either. But you're like, you need 3 million. It's just phenomenal to think that the numbers are so big. And has the UK just been very tar- tardy, the government, in, in building and social housing or affordable housing? What's happened there? It's, it's just the way, the way, as I say, the structuring that's been done. The Again, to give you some idea of the figures, uh, from the end of the Second World War through to the early 80s, we were efficiently and effectively building around about 126,000 homes a year. Again, for that to have gone from the, the 80s to where we are now, a little over 6,000 homes per annum, you can see that the deficit is, uh, as I always say to people when I talk to them, there could be 20 Bitcoin out there and we still wouldn't be able to, to meet the requirements that are, that are desperately, desperately needed in the UK. And in the same way as you said, you know, we have people, the government and the taxpayer effectively, are paying out way above the odds for substandard uh, accommodation, emergency accommodation, which could all be dealt with very straightforwardly in the way that we come to market as a fully private sector-backed solution. So we don't require any taxpayers' money to be able to deliver many, many, many social homes, affordable homes and key worker homes into the UK. And it's what we have. Our solution is a is a eureka moment. It's a it's a it's a true game changer that needs to be fully fully adopted. So, can you explain how it works? So, you're a private. It's a private initiative. But how are you going to raise the money? What are you going to are you going to raise money? Build houses? How, how does it all work? Yeah. So, effectively, what what we do is uh, we by negotiating with uh, the local authority or the local councils or the the, the London boroughs or, or the local authority in general. We effectively offer them a long-term lease over the property. So they have nomination rights to put whom they wish into those properties. So that's very important. So you're you're not actually administering the who gets the housing, because that's obviously a a governmental thing. I mean, for a private company to decide who gets into the housing could be a bit strange. But with the government, you expect them to act to certain standards and be accountable. Correct. So they have full nomination rights. We are effectively a private developer and private landlord so Mm -hmm. that all of the tenancy agreements are effectively between Bitcoin and the individual tenants, albeit the local authority gets to choose that tenant selection and allocation. Mm -hmm. And and what we ask for back from them is what we call a parental guarantee over the lease, which is effectively a UK central government guarantee that the leases 
are secured in perpetuity, so over the long term. So these people are safe, secure, that they, you know, they don't have, they're not being housed by rogue landlords and all of the, all of the bad things that we hear in substandard accommodation that's not managed properly, doesn't have the right levels of security and general upkeep and maintenance. So in essence, yes, the local authority is in complete control over the, the, the whole period of the, of, of the tenure of the lease, um, which is fantastic. What makes you different from other private developers? Uh, well, a lot of private developers out there don't actually want to build any affordable homes <laughs> for true. starters. So, so effectively, what's been happening to date? So historically, th- this is an example. It's not. It's not not the core. The only reason why, but typically, you know, land has been sold out of the public purse. So, land that is effectively held by these local authorities for and on behalf of the people of, of the UK, it's been sold to the highest bidder. So the developers have effectively overpaid for the land, and then they have what they call a Section 106 on these properties, which is the affordable housing allocation on a development, and they negotiate that down from day one because obviously they want to maximize commercial profits, and they blame the reason that they've overpaid for the land and their costs have risen since they bought the land, and all of these reasons in order not to put in um, sufficient numbers of, of affordable or social homes. I've, I've got to be care- <laughs> a little bit careful with my words. It's a situation that has to change. Uh, and I think you can probably read between the lines there. Well, it's very summer to hear. So another question then, what's to stop Bitcoin um, moving from you know, having these sheltered homes then deciding, no, I'm going to change them into luxury apartments? Because we have by, by deed and covenant within the, uh, the contract is that these homes will, will forever remain uh, remain affordable housing. That that's a hundred percent genuinely affordable housing, priced at the correct uh, rental levels. That that always fall in line with what central government provides in terms of the local housing allowance, is what it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, so it's, it's not a quick fix. Remain like that forever. Yeah, it's, it's not a quick fix. You're not running in building social houses and then saying, "Oh no, actually, we'll change them into." Luxury homes, because <laughs> we have the land. You're, you're no, 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 no. I mean, basically, that's, as I say, it's, it's by covenant that these, that, that's the whole point of what we're doing. You know, that there is a, a large social responsibility and social impact element to this. Obviously, mm-hmm. from the get-go, you can understand we're building affordable homes. But it's yes. more than that. It's actually creating a long-term community rebuilding and structuring that is desperately, desperately required. What we don't need in Britain is lots and lots more prime luxury properties that you know nobody can afford or maybe overseas investors only can afford we don't need more of this we need mm. we, we, well the numbers speak for themselves we need the mm. uh, desperately need uh, quality quality affordable housing for the people of britain okay so how does this fit into the cryptocurrency blockchain world What's that? so you, is that the raising of the money the token how does that work yeah, I think, you know, my background is over the last um, two decades is, has been involved directly in, in probably development and funding properties and structuring the project finance on those properties and ultimately seeing the emergence of them with the developer. And so I was already working on a conventional affordable housing solution, um, which, is, is, as you can tell, is, a, is an issue close to my heart. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the time, I was also beginning to learn more about cryptocurrencies and the benefit of blockchain technology. And then a thought occurred to me, uh, you know, what if we could create a truly cross-border effect to combine blockchain technology with the centuries-old understanding of land and property? And the outcome of that is, is Bitcoin. The reason being is that I feel not only does, does the, the crypto side and the digital currency side allow people to get involved in this asset class, i.e. property, for a lot less than they otherwise would be able to. I think the real kicker here is liquidity that blockchain offers. You know, property investment is inherently illiquid as an asset class, and Bitcoin's model allows investors to liquidate their investments on global currency exchanges 365 days a year, 24-7. So I think that's a huge benefit, or one of the one of several very good benefits for, for Bitcoin using the new technology of blockchain. So the Bitcoin tokens, they won't, you're, not, you're not sort of tokenizing individual properties. It's the whole company you're tokenizing, would that be correct? Uh, effectively, we're giving people exposure to the asset class. So but because we need to build and deliver so many homes, ours is a scale model. So we have to have a lot of developments in our pipeline 
So there's various ways where people... So, so first and foremost, to answer your question, people gain exposure to what we're doing. What we're not doing is we're not breaking down the bricks and mortar as, as individual ownership in an asset. Mm-hmm. Um, what we do, very, very importantly, is we retain the ownership, the freehold ownership of the uh, each of the assets that we we build and deliver to the market. So what we sell is we sell the long-term lease to our institutional partners. We don't sell the building. So that, in essence, backs, secures, and allows the value of the, of the token to grow. Secondly, we are a private developer, and we develop uh, to make competitive development profits, and that would typically be 20%. Again, with this being a scale model, we're not big, bad, greedy private developer who's trying to squeeze as much as much profit as possible and deliver a, a low-quality scheme. So we get competitive profit, so that's number two. And then we also generate uh, revenue from project management of each of our developments, and also we facilities, we provide facilities management for the building afterwards, so it, it retains um, the standard and quality uh, that, that was delivered day one. So do you expect then, uh, you're, are you looking for institutional investors or ordinary people, or is there a roadmap on how you would look at uh, taking the income in? Well, well we've, we've got both already. So from the point of view of the crowd sale of the digital currency, that is for mass adoption. It's a community-based model. So as I said before, allowing lots of people to invest from and buy coin from a reasonable amount. And then on the on the flip side, we have institutional support from uh, financial institutions and uh, such as pension funds and what have you for actually bringing the emergence of these projects and ultimately supporting us as we go forward. So just to be very clear on our model, what we actually do is we, we either acquire land with fully permitted planning on it, a redevelopment opportunity such as a commercial building with planning to be converted into residential units or a finished oven ready a development that's for sale from another private developer possibly at a discount once we've done that obviously we negotiate the lease and once the lease has been signed and there's that parental guarantee from the local authority we sell that uh, fixed income strip to the pension fund who are very happy to buy that because effectively that's a gilt edged investment grade security at that point and effectively that gets our money out and we can roll it into the next development and so on and so forth so it's a win-win for everybody you know the local authorities get numbers on the board in terms of housing for much needed housing uh, for people we have a really good cash flow in our system to be able to move on uh, to one one after another development and then obviously the pension funds can deliver to their investors in terms of return and ultimately because of what we're doing we return growth and value to our coin holders. So literally everybody wins. Most importantly, those those who, who really desperately need to be homed or to be put into better quality housing. And where are you on the roadmap now? We uh, began uh, the turn of the year and we ran a private sale, which was effectively uh, subscribed to very, very quickly. Some really close supporters of ours some fantastic support from friends and family and what have you. And obviously people who are just champion, they just they absolutely think what we're doing is fantastic. And and they see how straightforward that private sector back tier one, you know, grade A delivery solution is just is it it's just crying out to be embraced. So we had some superb support in the in the private sale, which closed uh, some time back. And believe it or not, as we talk, we're actually just about to close our what we've called our pre-sale i think on the on the stroke of midnight tonight so um and that pre-sale will be fully subscribed which is also fantastic so we've garnered some amazing support from individuals just over the last uh, last two and a half weeks and then tomorrow our main crowd crowd sale begins and that will run until the end of August and hopefully by then all, or it will run until it, it until the tokens are, are taken up but uh, the backstop date is the 31st of August. So two last questions for you James. First one is um, where can people go to buy tokens from tomorrow the open crowd sale? Yes so they can just just visit brickcoin.net that's b r i k 
bitcoin.net and they can buy there's a there's an icon there where you can buy bitcoin and that will take you through to a very very super uh, simple interface where you can sign up for a bitcoin account which will then give you your own dashboard and you can go through there and buy bitcoin in three cryptocurrencies so you can buy in bitcoin ethereum and binance coin or you can simply make a credit card payment very straightforwardly as you would with any online payment that's uh, interesting operation. i didn't realize that the binance coin how come you, you put them on is it just a popularity or was any do you have any contact with binance no it is simply the fact that the guys the team that we've worked with on our back, back end functionality yeah. on that dashboard that was that was part of the offering uh, wow, that they could put forward yeah. yeah. And then this last question to ask, when do you hope to hand over the keys of your first property to, to somebody? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question because as, a, as I stand here talking to you, as it were, where we've been in negotiations for some time on several schemes that we want to launch. And ideally, we'd really like to skip the 18 to 24 month build out of a land acquisition, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're actually in the process of trying to secure a completed building via good industry contact of ours. So that would effectively be straight to market, oven ready, it's finished. We can, we can hand the keys to local authority as it were tomorrow. Obviously, it'll take some more time in terms of paperwork, but that would be great. If not, then we'll be announcing a project in the coming weeks, uh, which will be a new build out. And that would be an 18 month uh, turnaround. Fair enough. Well, thank you so much for your time today, James. Very interesting, uh, tackling social issues, but it's also a a real project. And I I do like it. The nub of the project, too, as well, is that it's a commercial project. You're going to make money. So people who invest will get their returns, liquidity, and all that stuff. But you're not trying to gouge anybody. You know, use a horrible expression. You know, you you want to make money. It's commercial, but you want to deliver good product and and charge good prices for it. So I think that's a, a really nice way of looking at a business. Yes, and, and we're, 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 it's extreme, as I say, it's something very close to my heart. It's a project I'm hugely passionate about, and, uh, and it's doing good. I mean, it literally is doing good for everybody. So as I, I always say, with Bitcoin, everybody wins. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much again for your time, James. Uh, CEO Bitcoin without the C, so B-R-I-K-C-O-I-N dot net. Am I right? Dot net at the end? That's correct. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time, and I'll hope to catch up with you soon to hear more. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much, Gillian.